In section 6.1, we learned that discrete random variables have probability distributions that can be written multiple ways. So they can be written in a table form and they can be written in a histogram form, which I actually have going on here for this problem, which we've seen before, but suffice to say there's a discrete random variable distribution in table right down here and histogram right over here. Now before we get into that, let's remind ourselves what this problem is. So this is the NBA problem that we saw in Chapter 5. So the average free throw percentage for an NBA player is 77%, which means the chances they will shoot a successful free throw, they will make the basket, is 77%. You're going to randomly select three NBA players and have each of them shoot a free throw. Recall we came up with the following tree diagram and probability distribution of possible outcomes way back in Chapter 5. Now notice that many of these probabilities repeat. So for example, um, and I marked these for, with color to help. So SSS is success, success, success. So we give it green. So I'm, I'm working off the stoplight method here. So green means go, so yay team. And then yellow is cautious, two successes, one failure. And there's three ways that can happen. And then there's the orange, very cautious, right? So two failures, one success. And then fail, fail, fail is red. Stop, stop, stop and try to figure out what's going on. Now, how did we find those probabilities? Well, let me remind you, we found them right here in section 5.3. We first figured out what the possible outcomes were, how large the sample space was, created a tree diagram to help us figure out that sample space. Then we calculated the probability for every possible type. And then all sorts of questions were asked about it. So it took us a good page and a half, two pages to figure this out. In chapter 5 and that's no good for us I mean it's fine in chapter 5 right but the problem is that that's not a very efficient way to be doing problems like this we want a more efficient way to be able to figure out the probabilities in the sample space quickly so we found those probabilities I just wrote it right here sample space and probabilities were found over two pages of by hand work in section 5.3 and that's um, not efficient not efficient right? We want another way that will be more efficient, something that'll work quickly and easily. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the sample space from chapter five, success, success, and all that stuff. And we're going to convert it into a random variable that's discrete. Now the successes and failures is a qualitative thing, right? Success, fail, those are words. And we want to change it into a quantitative thing, zero, one, two, three, and so on. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So zero successes would be the equivalent of fail, fail, fail. So it's in red right here. Fail, 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 right? Point zero, one, two, one, six, seven. One success, right? Well, that happens three different ways in the raw data set. Success, fail, 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 success, fail, and fail, fail, success, or fail, fail, success. There we go. So. I'm not going to figure out these three individual probabilities. What I can do, however, is add the three of them up. So the three of them together, here I wrote it up, is 0.1222. In the fall of 2015, there was a small typo. It should be 1222. Sorry about that. And then for two successes and one failure, it should be 136 plus 136 plus 136, 0 0.136, I should say. So when you add up those probabilities, you'll get 0 0.4092. Actually, that's a typo. It should be 0 0.4091. Sorry about that. Um, and I can find that. Now, you could just add them, but when you add something times itself three times, that's the same thing as multiplying it by three. So there you go. So I want three times 0 0.136367. And it should be 0 0.4091. All right, now what about three? Well, three, there's no rounding there. So that's four, five, six, five. So indeed, that's just fine. 0.4565. And that's the three successes. So the only two that required adding for us were the, two, the, the success, success, fail, the two successes, and then the one success, the orange ones, so the yellow ones and the orange ones. Now, this has become a discrete random variable with a probability distribution attached, right? So it's, it's wonderful, it's fabulous. Um, it doesn't give us the individuals, 
but it's a lot um, more efficient for us, especially because we're going to be able to come up with a computer program that will find these numbers for us. Now I made the colors of the histogram bars match the coloring that we're using here in this random variable distribution. So you can see that the green bar is the highest at 0.4565 and then the yellow bar is the next highest and so on. Now realize the power of what we're doing here. We're taking something that is qualitative data, success, 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 for example, and we're converting that into quantitative data, right, which is three. You're taking something that is a qualitative random output, right, of an experiment and converting it into a very specific type of discrete random variable. Namely, it's called a binomial random variable. Now, you can only do this sometimes. You can't do this for all problems, but you can do it if particular conditions are met. And we'll talk about what those conditions are in another page. But suffice it to say that what we're doing is taking something that was pretty inefficient and by converting it into this quantitative random variable, as long as conditions are met, it'll make it very quick and efficient and easy to find with a calculator. All right, and then the lovely histogram matches. You can see how small that red bar is in comparison to the rest of them. So, and this shouldn't be any shock, but for an NBA player having three fails or th three random NBA players having fail, fail, fail is a pretty random or a pretty low probability occurrence, pretty unusual. Now the problem with all of this is that it took us a long time to do, right? First we created a, his, or a tree diagram, there I can think of the word, and then we had to come up with this lovely table. Then we converted that table into this random variable, and then we drew a histogram from it. That takes a long time. And this was only three players. What if we wanted to do it for 30 players, for 300 players? There's got to be an easier way. And the answer is there is. It's called the binomial probability distribution, and it's in your calculator. So you're going to be able to use your calculator to come up with those probability numbers much more quickly than you could get just doing this longhand form where you had to come up with a tree diagram first. Trust me, you do not want to make a tree diagram for 30 players, let alone 300 players. But the binomial distribution from your calculator will work even with those very large numbers, and it's extremely quick.